What's going on, y'all? We got the trifecta here um, for the Green Bay Health Project podcast. I'm Trevor, and I am joined by my lovely wife, and some of you know her as Dr. Erica. Others just say Erica. I say Erica. And the OG Green Bay Doulas. What else is there to say? Emily Jacobson, y'all. Um, it's the Queen Bee. Pretty solid uh, episode coming, and uh, you know if you if you want to learn more about Emily and what she's doing at Green Bay Duos, it's freaking awesome. You're going to hear more about it here, but definitely hit up. Um, it was episode 13 over two years ago. We just looked back. Um, that was a pretty. I mean, that's at honestly, Emily. At that point, I was like, if and when we have kids, like you're part of the plan because it was awesome. That's honestly the the episode we got probably the most feedback on and most people reaching out being like, that was awesome. So should definitely check that out. Glad to be back. It was a good episode. I think it was, was my, one of my favorites. Yeah, it was great. It was phenomenal. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do, I mean, we have, we are with child now. (laughs) Um, Lincoln is, he'll be eight weeks old on Friday. And, uh, essentially what we want to do is, um, I'm going to hand it on over to to you guys, and you talk as much or as little, Erica, obviously, as you want to share. Um, I'm going to let you guys kind of dictate, and I will, you know, definitely give my two cents on that awesome day, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm handing it on over, handing the reins over to you guys. Yeah, I will say, like, looking back on how far that episode was how long ago it was I don't think at that time I really knew what a doula was until I heard that podcast and then after that I was like well I'm calling up Emily as soon as I know I'm pregnant and I'm pretty sure that she was the first person I called even before I established care with a midwife or anything I was like hey are you free I'm probably doing July (laughs) so she quickly became part of my team um and I was so glad that she was and that she was part of the whole process because um, knowing Emily over the last couple of years and how much she knows us, she was able to then help us through the entire labor and delivery process as well. So I can't sing Emily's praises enough about how important it is to have a doula, even just for Trevor's sake. Yeah, I think Trevor Gosh. learned a lot. <laughs> About what? Life? <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of inside jokes that have happened from Census birth experience. Um, but, um, it, it's for everybody. We talk about that all the time. I talked about that in my original podcast that, you know, think of us like event planners. Like we literally yes. helped you, uh, even be accountability, um, towards like, do you have these supplies yet? Um, and checking in with you making sure you got them and the event planning of just, you know, what books, uh, what supplies, what information do you need? And that's all just planning beforehand. And then when you get into the actual, aspect of joining you for your labor and birth. Um, it's a whole different set of event planning, but still in, in the game. Um, I think it's the easiest way to describe it to people who don't know what doulas are. Yeah. And I would say that through pregnancy, I felt like I had a very uneventful pregnancy. Luckily, um, didn't feel like I needed a ton of support, but just knowing that Emily and Stephanie were just a phone call or a text away and they were checking in with me just to see how I was doing. And instead of like always talking to Trevor how I was doing, I could talk to these incredible women to say like, hey, this is what's going through my mind right now. This is how I'm feeling, you know, at this stage or just like, hey, what do you think about um, placenta encapsulation? Oh, by the way, we actually do that. Awesome. (laughs) So just being able to have that resource throughout pregnancy without having to turn to Google or even like friends and family. Um, Oh, Lincoln has something to say about that too. He agrees. (laughs) Yeah, we Um, hate the Google. Yeah. So like instead of having to turn to that, I know somebody who's been through many births that could give me that support or the resources to turn to instead. So I would say that was helpful. But when it came to the actual process of our birth, like as a lot of uh, people know, we 
wanted a home birth. And we were pretty adamant that from even before pregnancy, we had um, done a, a lot of research and even our line of work, we realized we really wanted to do a home birth. And um, I'm sure when I told Emily that she was like, uh, no, that's going to be so boring. She thrives in chaos and home birth is the a- is absolute opposite of that. <laughs> opposite of chaos? Me out. <laughs> But this is why she's so good at what she does, because she can adapt. Um, so she uh, – anyway, so anyway, we were going to do home birth. And um, as also some people know, it didn't go directly as planned. Um, and that was a whole mental shift, physical shift that uh, I had to go through and you guys all had to go through as well. And I think there's you know pros and cons to both sides, but also knowing what you feel the most comfortable in is the place that – you should probably give birth in. And for me, my home was that place. I mean, Trevor and I set up this like beautiful birthing center basically in our bedroom. Like we had all the things, we had the diffuser going, we had a humidifier, we had music lined up, we had the tub there, you know, ambiance, we had the salt lamps on everything. We're like, all right, this is going to be like where we give birth, like in this room. And sure enough, that's not what happened. Um, I mean, let's see our I, my water broke the day before my due date and it was like Hollywood gushing water break. I had no idea that was what was going to happen. Um, but sure enough, it happened. And I didn't have contractions throughout the next like 12 hours or so. Um, so to make a long story short, uh, my midwife did do a lot of augmenting to get contractions to start. And once they started at like midnight that, that night, they went they came hard and fast. And I think about two hours after that, Trevor and I were freaking out. We are like, okay, we need to call Emily. I don't know if we need to call the midwife yet, but we need to call Emily for sure. And um, she's like, oh, maybe give it a little bit of time. But I think you were at our house by 3 or 4 a.m. Is yeah. that right, Emily? No, somewhere around it was, that. It was always at, my witching think- hour. Everyone loves to call me in at 3, 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. Just how it works. That was the goal. I remember... Cause I was, we were in contact, Emily, pretty much from the time, like midnight on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I remember you just being like, how are things going? Me telling you, she's like, okay, I'm going to take a little nap. You know, I'll shoot for three. And I think around one thirty or two o'clock, I was like, uh, can you, can, can you get here? <laughs> Please come now. Uh, I think yep. that was around the time though. I started like feeling more uh, discomfort and they were coming a lot faster than I was anticipating. And I could tell Trevor was freaking out. And because he was starting to freak out, I was freaking out. So we we're like, all right, we got to call Emily. Like she needs, we need her presence. <laughs> For sure. And we were there. Then, yeah. I mean, you, you left right away. Like, yep. I'm leaving. Yep. Yeah. It's a lot easier to sneak out in the night when everyone's like sleeping. I don't have to put me a dinner together. I'm not target shopping. And I was prepared. Like I had all day where I was kind of like, hmm, are these going to happen? Should I take a nap? You know? And so we kind of have to play along with the information we're given from you on how we're going to take care of ourselves. Um, Cause as we realize, like we could be awake for a few nights. So, <laughs> and then really just work through what's happening on that. Um, but you called when you needed to call and and I was on the way. So, and, and I think a lot of people see me as like such a super high energy person all the time and they don't see me in like the birth world and I'm actually pretty calm once I'm there. You are. I know. You are. So like as soon as you arrived, it's like we had this like calming effect on us. Like, okay, now things are okay. Like baby could come at any point because Emily's here. <laughs> I just don't catch them. Just. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, once once you got there, I felt like uh, like I said, just a lot more at peace and comfortable, and like okay, this can happen now. Like, all right, we're gonna have a baby real soon, and I think we all thought he would come by like late morning, based mm-hmm. on how things were were progressing. Um, but through a series of crazy events, you know, between having to do the castor oil. So my guts were completely empty. So I was like really dehydrated um, despite trying to keep water down. And um, what else happened? Oh, between my like cervix having to get like manipulated and everything too, which 
was a painful experience, but I will say that between Trevor holding me the whole time and then Emily reminding me to tune into my breath because we had already previously talked about like what are some of like the pain management techniques we're going to use here? Like how do you want to, you know, be addressed and how do you want to go through these uh, techniques? Because we had already established them, I felt like tuning into what Emily was saying was exactly what I needed. I could feel Trevor's presence and then Emily saying the exact right things that my mind needed to hear because she just knew how my brain worked. I was able to get through a lot of the um, contractions with a little bit more ease, I should say. I will say that I didn't expect all the movement that I needed. I think I told you in the beginning, Emily, like when I'm in pain, I move usually. Like if I stub a toe, I'm walking it off Mm -hmm. basically. Um, So we use the entire living room in order to squat and lunge and walk and do all the things. I mean, she, Emily's got this really cool... What is it? What do you call that? That big the cub. thing that you brought? The cub. It stands yeah. for a, co- a comfortable upright birth, and it's an inflatable birthing stool. Um, one of our doulas found them on Pinterest many, many years ago, and they do make them finally in the United States, um, but they're really handy for us. And I think the part for you, too, is that people have a certain idea of how they're going to react in, in when they're feeling those surges. And mm-hmm. um, I don't like to call it pain. I like to call it power. Um, yes. You know, and, uh, but I had to, I had to like convince you to change positions because you didn't want to. You're like, I can manage it here. And I'm like, you'll be able to manage it here too. It's just going to take a little bit of time to acclimate. And so I'm like, but if we're only using this part, if we're only doing this position, we're only working this part and knowing how Erica's brain works, being in the line of work that she does, it was very easy for me to say, like, we have to work different parts. And I knew she would understand that. And mm-hmm. and in the end, there still was a little cervical lip. And, and that's just a baby's positioning, too, that, you know, we can do everything in our possibilities to say, hey, let's get optimal positioning for baby. But sometimes there's just one little thing that they just don't want to do. And that's kind of why you had to have that manipulation done a little bit was because of that cervical lip at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And some of that I kind of blacked out. I'm not going to lie. I was trying to reflect on the entire process. I even like wrote down our book birth story too. And I was like, oh, there's a lot of it. I just had my eyes closed and I was just very in tune to like my surround. I took out my vision completely because it was just too overwhelming, but just like hearing Emily and Trevor, feeling Trevor, and then just trying to feel Lincoln too. And just going with that, those gut feelings helped me a lot versus taking in the extra stimulus of like opening my eyes to everything that was, that was going down too. But baby's going to do what baby's going to do. And um, once they determined that I just was not progressing and damn pelvic floor, what <laughs> would not let go as much as I was trying. Um, And I think what they gave me an ultimatum, like we're going to go, we're going to transfer to the hospital um, if in the next 30 minutes things aren't progressing anymore. And I just remember feeling like how heavy my pelvis felt and I could feel his head. And I'm like, it's like right there. Like he just needs to come out already. If I could just get something to happen. And so I got like this whole second wind. I remember standing, Emily, you were on one side of me and and encouraging me. And I like gulped down half a banana and I sucked down a bunch of water, which was like the most I'd eaten in probably 12 hours. And I was like, here we go. Let's do this. Like my athlete brain kicked in. Like, this is like the time to push. It's like, you know, going into overtime. It's time to do it. And still 30 minutes had passed and I was, I was devastated. I'm not going to lie. I had at least an vision for a home birth. I didn't know what it was going to look like, what to expect. And I tried not to put any expectations on that, but I at least thought I have this incredible um, experience of having a home birth. That's what I wanted for myself, however it may look. And when it came to it that everybody called it like we have to transfer to the hospital, um, I was devastated. And at that point, too, I also realized like I was ready for Lincoln to come like at this point. He wasn't going to unless I had assistance as well. Mm-hmm. Right, buddy? As he's fussing with me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Trevor drove us over there. Um, and we got to the hospital. And I immediately 
when we got, got into the room, I went to that same like bent over position, eyes closed. I, like I couldn't see everything because it would be too overwhelming for my emotional state to see all the lines and the things and the people that were running in and out of the room. And and so I just kind of tuckered in. And again, I cued into Emily and Trevor's voice, like, what ex- what are my options here? Like, give it to me straight. What do I need to do? The last, my last, last resort ever is if we were to go to a C-section and if I could prevent that as much as possible, um, that was, that was going to be my, my mind shift from like, okay, I'm not having the home birth that, that was going to happen, but I definitely don't want this to end in a C-section if we can do everything possible at that point. I don't know what it was like for you, Trevor, in that whole, whole instance, but I remember on the ride, like you didn't say one single thing. (laughs) <laughs> I was just trying I to get there. Out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's what um, I think is so cool about all of this. Like just hearing you kind of talk through it and obviously how it ended, you know, with um, needing some assistance and everything like that. And you can talk about that if you want. But I don't know what I would have done without you, Emily. Like I, uh, when I, I think at one point, when we were at the hospital, I think it might've been the next morning when you came back and uh, you were like, had I known, like just knowing you, I knew that if I was going to put my hand on your shoulder, you would have lost it. Like I was barely keeping it together. So I think like, and you were spot on. Mm-hmm. So like you we're, we're so grateful that we have the relationship we do with you and that you were there because you know us. And even throughout the day, you were just like, it was hard for me to sit there okay, putting, saying hard is like easy. It was damn near impossible for me to sit there and see him like Erica go through what she was. Um, and knowing like there wasn't a whole lot I could do to, to help, but I knew that she was listening to you like way more than she was listening to me. And that's what I wanted. Like I could be there, like, like you were saying, Erica to help support and like hold you up and, and all that. And like kind of knowing the pre plan stuff that all three of us had talked about. Um, and what was going to be most beneficial for us and how we could help you most effectively. Erica throughout that day, um, I think was incredibly important, but then Emily just being like, Trevor, it's not Hollywood. I'm like this is birth, <laughs> like this is labor. And, uh, knowing the subtle cues and talking me down and just being like, Hey, you got to keep it together. Cause it's, it's, Erica needs that but then knowing that she was queuing into what you were saying and you were able to bring her back down like that is so invaluable and i like from my end i would have been 100 percent lost without you and i also know erica would have been as well so um from from the get-go even before labor and then throughout the entire labor you followed us right to the hospital you're like i'm there I'm not missing this. You were right back the next morning, checking in, setting everything up. I think you came back that fo- that following weekend. Like, it's just invaluable, and we appreciate you. I, I don't know how else to say it. Like, I owe you. You got me through that day. I, I think what you guys are doing is so important. Everybody should be seeing you guys and have you guys with them, whether it's home birth, hospital birth. Like, we kind of had the unique experience where we saw both. <laughs> you know, things didn't like Erica was saying, didn't work out how we had envisioned. And I think I probably had, I didn't know what to expect, but I could never have prepared for that. Um, But seeing both ends and like just how it worked at home and then at the hospital and then the follow-up and having you there, like, again, just invaluable is putting it lightly. So I, I hope you know that. And I hope people know that like what you guys are doing is incredible. Yeah. And like this line of work, uh, you know, the hard part, people are like, oh, why don't you hire more doulas? And I'm like, because dual, being a doula is a calling. It's not mm-hmm. something you can post on Indeed. Um, you have to have people skills. You have to be able to read people. You have to be uh, in an empath. You have to be able to, you know, I could just sense Trevor's energy. And that like, if I tried to tell this man to go take a nap or do anything like that, that's not going to work for him. That's not who he is right now. He is too invested in what Erica's doing and protecting her space right now. But I also know he's losing it on the inside and I'm not going to make it worse by, by being like, here's a hug, my friend. It's okay. Um, you just, I'm that, I have, I'm the same way. I'm like, ah, if you touch me, I'll lose it. I'll be fine. Um, 
but then in the same respects, you know, uh, being well versed. And as you guys said, like, I am much more of a hospital birth doula. It's just because I love policy and procedures and it's very predictable. Um, in home birth, it's, it's weirdly predictable. So it's more just like, what do you need versus, hey, so when we did transfer, I was much more in my element and the nurses coming in and being like, hey, Emily, how are you? And, you know, I feel like that kind of helped you guys relax a little bit more Absolutely. knowing that like, I already had the respect of the nurses that were already there. The OB that ended up helping us was my OB at one point in my life. And I've worked with her for the past 12 years. Um, and, and I knew her personality. So I think that's the big part too, is when we knew who was on call, I was able to tell you guys, she's awesome. She's going to follow the lead. I think a lot of people assume that if you're transferring for a home birth, that means you have to have a C-section. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it's as simple as just getting a little assistance or IV fluids. Sometimes it's an epidural. Sometimes it's just little things that just can't be done at home. Um, so mm -hmm. it's not always big interventions. It's sometimes just small. And you guys just needed a small one and you were good to go. Um, I think the irony that we kind of laughed at was that you guys being so well-versed in pelvic floor that you learn, like you can prepare as best as you want, but at the end of the day, <laughs> you're still going to learn happen. about your body. You're still always yes. going to keep learning about your body. And I'm sure postpartum now, you're still learning about your body and how it has shifted oh, from having a baby. Um, you know, I, I laughed a lot with Trevor and, and I, I deflect with humor and I know he does too. So that's how I tried to like keep him going. It's just kind of weird, odd humor with him and get him laughing and just like break the tension of the focus of what's happening. Um, and, and with Erica, I knew she was in that training mode and you just had to keep the support going, um, keep her fed, keep her hydrated, uh, change the scenery, change it up. Um, you know, keep her engaged in that mode and focus on the end game, not get consumed with what the presence present was happening. And so you guys did so good at it. Um, you know, to me, it didn't didn't feel like a crazy birth, um, but I go into protection mode when we have to do these transfers. And so on the drive there, that's when Tower Drive was still getting repainted. And as I'm coming on the traffic, I'm like, oh my God, they're in this traffic too. And I'm on the phone with Stephanie, like, hey, one of the big things we want to make sure is that the house is clean um, because we literally just up and left it. And so we don't want you coming home to the trauma that of like all everything kind of everywhere. And, and thankfully we had, you guys had a great team with the midwives too, who did help clean up all of it. Um, but I was already on the phone with Stephanie ready to break into your house after I left you to finish cleaning up everything. And so we're, we're there for this whole experience of stuff. And, and although we can't, predict what's going to happen. Our goal is that we know all the environments and we can help you navigate them. And I think if anything, you guys learned that we can navigate a lot of different terrain. Um, yes. And, and also keep this weird, cool, calm. We might be freaking out on the inside, but you'll never know kind of a sweat happening. Um, you know, cause you just don't know what's going to happen either. Um, but you have to be confident that in your training as a doula, that you've learned that birth is absolutely unpredictable and you have to be able to go with it. And for people who are type A people, I'm a total type A, but for some reason, I love the unpredictability of birth. I don't know what the next day is going to bring. It keeps me on my toes. I don't have a schedule. I do, but it shifts every day. Um, we've rescheduled this twice. So <laughs> True. This, is, this is what we do. This is our lives. And, and I wouldn't change it for those moments. And, and I just celebrated baby 150, um, that I personally attended. And I try to think about like, what would that look like with all these stories, all these people in this room and my oldest babies, uh, doula babies are sixth graders. And then here's a new one coming into the world as school starts, you know? And so it's just really interesting for me, I guess we, I'm like blind to it where I'm like, I'm just doing my job. It's great. But I'm sure people, you've met people in your line of work too, that like you've changed their lives and you're like, well, I'm just doing my job. But like, you don't really right. see the impact that you actually can have uh, on so many stories of people and helping them on their journeys. Oh, that's, that's so true. I mean, I think your line of work is just so powerful. Um, 
And I, I think it is incredibly hard, the adaptability being, again, a type A person. I have a hard time adapting my schedule day to day as I'm learning too with a newborn. But, you know, you you do it with such ease. It, it, it amazes me that you were able to transfer your, your mindset from, okay, if we went from a home birth, okay, now we're transferring to now we're, we're here in the hospital. And I think for me too, just knowing that you've had all these experiences and you did, like you said, you knew the staff, you knew um, who was helping to deliver. And so right then I immediately had the trust of everybody there because I trusted Emily. So I knew like I was going to be in good hands. Like she knew these people, she trusted them. Okay. Then I'm okay with this now. It was like that quick mind shift that that I needed in order to make sure baby was coming and we were all going to be okay too at the end of the day. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, um, there were a lot of voices going in on what your options were, but yeah. you looked at me and you were like, what are they? <laughs> I was like, okay, I know. I just remember these three. all these voices. I remember all these voices and I, I think I was Trevor, I think I was holding your hand mm-hmm. and I was like, I just need to hear Emily's voice. Like, what, what, what are my options, and what do you think I should do? You know, and you were like, okay, you could do some pitocin just to get some contractions going, and let's. Because at that point, they were really fizzled out. I was hardly, I couldn't push. That's for sure. Um, they weren't lasting much longer than twenty seconds. So we could usually do some pitocin to get some going and just start going again, or um, you know, we could do the vacuum and have help manipulate his head so that he would actually come out. Um, And then I think the last, last, last option was C-section. Right. And I was like, let's, let's start with pit. Let's go from there and try to get the contractions going. I remember it hitting me and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is what contractions are supposed to feel like. (laughs) Like I was like, finally, I feel like I have power and I can push. And I felt like empowered all over again. It's like that fourth wind. I'm not sure, but um, and then again, because things weren't progressing, he wasn't his head wasn't moving much more. He was still getting stuck, and I remember hearing you again, Emily. Like, Erica, do you want to meet your baby? Like, do you want to meet him sooner rather than later? I'm like, fuck yes, I do. Like, it's about damn time. Like, we need to get this going. And she's like, do you know what you need to do at this point? I'm like, yeah, let's break out the vacuum at this point because I just I I didn't want to keep going. Like I I knew I knew he wasn't in distress. I wasn't in distress, but I was just so anxious to meet him at this point that it was time to do something different again. So again, I relied on you, Emily, to hear you know your words of wisdom. And we have to take in, and that's the hard part. Like Trevor being asked those questions of like, okay, so here are your options again, you're consumed in her, you're not consumed in, in the logistics of it. And so having that third party, uh, like a doula being able to say, you know, I have to take into account the options, but I also have to take account more. And I think we talk through it in those moments too, like your legs up in the stirrups. And I'm like, okay, so like, where are you mentally at right now? Do you have the energy to push your baby out? Do we need an epidural to get some sleep? And you're like, no, like, do you want to meet your baby? Like, it's just going to maybe, you know, so we can never tell you what to do, but I was taking into account like where your mental capacity was, where your energy level was, where, you know, what's going to be the least traumatic for you because we already transferred. I already know that there's trauma there. So how do I get you out of this in like the least amount of trauma? But, but then like the doctor standing there just being like, whatever you want to do. And you're like, that's not an answer. And so I'm like, okay, we got to take it one step further. So I'm able to kind of navigate what they're saying, translate it to you, and then be like, but let's make a decision. And so that's why I was like, do you just, you want to meet your baby? Like, because we could get an epidural, you could get some sleep, we could start Pitocin later. I think you were just done with it. You want to meet your baby. So I was like, okay, so if we take that one out, we take that one out, what's left? And so I have to kind of like nudge you, but I can't tell you what to do. (laughs) <laughs> but you did and, and you I listened, think, and you did it and it was yeah. awesome and that's, and that's exactly what I needed at that point like I needed like here are your options where are you at let's get after it at that mm-hmm. point just like don't sugarcoat it like let's just get an answer and start doing it let's be actionable so I needed that and I, and I know Trevor did too because like he was hinting at like he was slipping emotionally you know at that point and trying to be upright and supportive and if the medical staff had talked to him like what do you think we should do like what do you think she wants like he would be like I I, I don't know because we didn't talk about these things we didn't talk about the different 
ways that this could end a little bit differently than we envisioned either. So he wouldn't have known what my wishes were either. So to have you as that extra support in that situation to mitigate between us and then also the staff, I mean, it, it was so helpful during that time. Yeah. And then like um, explaining what was being said, like, cause for me, like you had said, I was like standing right by her head. My concern was her. I didn't really care about anything else. Um, and then, you know, you start hearing the words like hemorrhage and more yeah. blood than expected and like different levels. And I'm like, that's like literally what my biggest fear was around all of this was something like that happening. And so they're saying these things and I'm like, well, is that normal? Is it not normal? Is it more than normal? Is it like concerning levels? Like, where are we at? And I remember looking at YouTube being like, what, what does this mean? Like, are we, are we high? Are we, is there something else we need to do? And you're like, nope, like they're, they're good. Well under, they're higher, but well under concerning numbers or levels and just being like, oh, okay, I can breathe a little bit because things are going to be okay. Yeah. And I wouldn't have felt that had you not been there explaining this stuff to be completely honest. Yeah. It's hard because they, they, you know, the medical staff just speaks how they speak and they forget that you guys don't understand what they're saying. Or if somebody says increased risk, everyone assumes that that's like 300%, but increased risk could be as simple as 0.3% or 300. Both are increased risks. So being able to make those choices, you know, from that. Um, but through the whole thing, uh, you know, you guys were steadfast and, and, like if I ever need to train for an Ironman, you guys are going to be my coaches. I'll tell you that much. Because um, <laughs> the the way you guys both stayed in it so mentally and physically, it was just it was awesome. And not a lot of uh, I mean, there are many people who can, but for that length of time, for that long, um, you know, there's also a point of like duress where people are just like, I can't anymore. And even though after you said like I'm done, I want to meet my baby, you were still like cool, calm, and collected. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I, it was just, it was Even on the outside. I seem like that, not on the inside. <laughs> Same. I mean, we all are right. We're really good. Our poker faces are great. Um, right. Cause we don't know. I didn't know if that vacuum was going to work. I also knew in the back of my head, it two slips off, we go to C-section. So, you know, and then I see a lot of hair on that baby's head and I'm like, oh no, is this going to slip off? But inside I'm like, we're not going to deal with that until we get there. Like, and we're not right. there. So I'm not going to bring it up yet. Um, but I was ready for the conversation if we needed to, but um, it was fine. It was fine. So you guys did great. And I think um, being able to to capture, I a lot of people don't know, but like we take pictures throughout the whole thing. Um, I was going to bring that up. That was so You're amazing. Gonna <laughs> I was going to, I was going to say something about that. You can keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying for us being able to even look back at when we started taking the photos and when we're sending them to you to be like, Oh my gosh, what a journey that one was, you know, like those, those are the moments too. Where we're like, okay, like, yeah, that's that birth. There we go. <laughs> it's cool looking back in those photos. Cause a lot of it, like I said, I, I blacked out. I can't remember a, a ton of it, but like looking back and seeing like, damn, I looked hella strong. Like, yeah. look at me in that power pose right there. And look at Trevor, like just in it, you know? And then obviously the pictures of birth and then him on her, like that emotional connection that we had as soon as he was placed on my chest and Trevor and I are looking at each other. Like every time I look at that picture, I cry. I mean, it, it was so beautifully captured. I and they're live. Myself for her. <laughs> you do the live photo, and that brings a whole different element to the picture itself. And then Emily, we we didn't know that there's audio and volume with them. And so, with Erica at that picture, where we're looking at each other, and Lincoln's on her chest, and she's saying like, "We did it." We didn't hear that. Um until my we sent it to my family and they started like putting it in quotes and we were like how do they know what she said and we turned the volume up we're like oh my goodness i think we both cried because that was that's like the moment that i remember probably the most and the most clear because i think that's kind of when it was like okay things are gonna be all right and it was just but we have that to look back at mm -hmm. like, and that's freaking awesome oh gosh absolutely i I don't know how people don't have a doula at their birth at this point. I guess question for you, Emily, do, do, 
do a lot of second time parents typically hire a doula or would you say it's a lot more first time? Um, I would say it's almost 50 50 in a sense of one they, if it is a second time mom, it's for several reasons. One, the birth didn't go how they wanted to the first time around, or they realized that their partner wasn't as supportive as they thought they could be, or they both realized we got in over our heads on this and the next one we need help. Um, maybe it's because the first one was a C-section and now they want to do something different. Um, it usually is a reactive response when it's a second time, or they had a doula with their first and time to go with the second, you know, and we do it again and again. And there are some clients I've been with now. I think the most is three. I've been to all three babies. So I'm waiting for a four Pete. Um, <laughs> I'm not retiring until I get it. Um, <laughs> if we could help. <laughs> you will not do that. Okay. 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 That's the saddest. And that's the sad <laughs> part about our line of work too, is that, you know, sometimes it is only two we're ever with them with, or the first one. Cause they're like, we're one and done, or we're only doing having two kids or this was our last baby. Um, and so for us, it's like, no, don't say that. We love you. Come back. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think people hire doulas for different reasons. And sometimes it's a reactive approach and sometimes it's a proactive approach. And it just depends on what that family needs in that moment and what's going on. And, and is it complicated? Is it not complicated? Is it, you know, extra hands? Is it not? So everyone's different, but I would say it's it's either reactive or proactive. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. I think we line up with the proactive side only because I knew Trevor was going to be strong and steadfast. But I also knew like if he wasn't, I wasn't going to do well either. Mm -hmm. And so like having that that third person essentially to, to help support um, and knowing it was going to go all OK no matter what is – yeah what helped me in the end too. And I think that's one of the big questions people have is, is, is my partner going to feel replaced? Is it going to be weird with a third person there? Sure. So do you guys felt like, did you guys feel it was weird to have a person there? Not at all. Not at all. I can definitely see that side though. Yeah, of I never like, thought of oh, that. Is, is it weird to have that, that third person? Um, but I think because we had this such established relationship prior to the birth, it's not like I'm meeting you as you're coming into the, the doors like there was definitely staff there that I was meeting as they were coming in and I, like I didn't know them I didn't trust them right away mm -hmm. but knowing I could just like be vulnerable let go know that I was in good hands I think that that helps too and I think and that's why we say like the sooner people can call us and and get to know us I want to take if I have nine months to get to know you awesome mm -hmm. um there mm -hmm. are like hospital doula programs out there where like when you check in they would ask you like do you want a doula and then they would call whoever was on call and they would come in. I'm, I feel like that's no different than um, a nurse with less things to do per se. Like you still don't mm -hmm. know them. Um, and so mm -hmm. I'm not against those programs. I think they work for some things, but for us, um, it was the same thing when COVID happened and we had to go virtual. Um, being on a, can, can you imagine me being on a computer screen in the corner of that hospital room or in the corner of your mm -hmm. room? It's not the same. You have to be in person. Um, and so our perception is different than your perception. We're looking at different things than you are. We're 10 steps ahead of you in, in certain aspects. So um, it's, it's just an interesting dynamic of having a person there, but um, I, I, yeah, I, I'm never weirded out by it. And I always, you know, I think that's one of the big barriers though, is people are like, well, I could just have my mom do it. How do you think that that would have been different if like Erica, your mom came to the birth instead of me? Oh, completely different because I mean, she's got, no. yeah, like she's got her, she's going to be feeling vulnerable too. So like, and she has an emotional connection to me. So she's not going to be thinking clearly, you know? So like if we were to transfer, I'm sure she would have like been, you know, exploded. Like, I don't know if this is the right thing. Like she probably would have, like if she had an emotional meltdown again, like, like if, like I was saying earlier, like if Trevor wasn't steadfast, like I wouldn't have been either. And so like to have you being that stronghold of like, Hey, these are your options. This is how I'm supporting you. Remember Erica to breathe. Like you're basically this perfect middleman between the medical side, but also our personal wishes too. Like you knew us, you knew these different options and just helping us navigate that. Like 
You're the and ultimate guy. I got to guy. meet your mom weeks later, and then we took a picture together and sent it to you. And I thought, yeah. that was the funny thing. <laughs> now you're just part of the family. <laughs> I somebody overheard your mom overheard it and was like, "Wait, yeah. Emily, the doula? Wait, you're my daughter's doula." I was like, "Who's your daughter?" <laughs> she was like, "Erica and Trevor." And I was like, "Oh, hey." <laughs> but you can see, like, a lot of people just don't know the difference. They'll just be like, "Well, I can have my mom there instead, or I'll have my sister there." Right. But it, it's the, when there's that emotional connection there yes. they would have fed into trevor and mm-hmm. trevor would have been then focused on supporting them and you mm-hmm. and he couldn't do both and i know that mm-hmm. and it's no shame on him whatsoever but that is far too much for one person to have to try and navigate in that moment and you know for us we if anything we're saving marriages every day we're bringing you guys together we're showing you how to to communicate effectively with each other if i have a dad who's over talking and she's about to like lose her mind i can easily navigate and change him to be like too many words and then they're like oh I'm just nervous. I'm like, yep, totally no. <laughs> that, that's why you're doing yep. it. You're nervous. I got Diffusing you. the situation. <laughs> yeah. So we have to be able to read the room. We have to be able to see what's going on. And when we get time to get to know you, um, you know, I think that's a huge component of it. Like we're available to you, whatever you need, uh, emotionally, informationally, like we're ready for you. And, and I think that's a big part of our doula work is that we're juggling all these different relationships at once. And then how are we then taking care of ourselves? And so I tell to you guys, I was taking the whole month off. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I did not do, I mean, I kind of did well, but um, you know, (laughs) the, the thing was, is I, for the first time in seven years, went swimming with my kids and I left my phone in the car. Oh, good for you. Big, Yeah. It was huge. It was huge. And, but in the same respects, a lot of people would hear me say that and go, that's insane. You can't just like, go swimming with your kids? No, I can't because I was standing in the hospital room talking to a patient, a client who had delivered the day before you and you called and I'm like, Oh, hold on. I have a client calling. And you're like, Hey, my water broke. And I just looked down like, gotta go. And just, you know, then I was like, all right, here's how my day is going to unfold possibly. Okay. Let's see. So the, the roles of doulas, I just don't think people understand them. And I, that's why I think not many people have them. We're still, when I started, we were supporting less than half a percent of the birthing community. And now we're at about 2% of people that birth. But think about that. What about the other 98% so of people yeah. in Brown County in particular that don't have support systems like doulas? I don't know what they're doing. That's crazy. Honestly. That's a huge percent. Like Maybe. that's way lower than I probably would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at is that for Brown County? Or is that's just if I that- if we take into account how many babies are born per year, um, and how many of those babies we help support, we're about two percent. Oh, that is that is just insane to me. Mm-hmm. Like that's just but then does that go into like the hospitals around the area that most of them are somewhere between 75 to 90 percent epidural rates is that the c-section rate is somewhere between anywhere between 34 to 42 percent in our community like does that have anything to play into it um i really love that the nurses in our community are taking a lot more uh education on spinning babies and and different things like that and so it is amazing to work in the hospitals because i've helped a lot of them and they've helped me too. There's a lot of the positions in the beds that they can do because they get to play with the hospital bed and the stirrups and I don't. So I'm like, oh, you teach me and then I'll teach you. And, you know, there's collaborative care. And I just wish we had more, uh, everyone was more open to collaborative care and and not so, you know, just closed off or scared of it. Um, Because I think there's so much beauty in having that collaborative model that everyone's on the same page, whether you guys even being, you know, physical therapists in your roles and in trainers, being able to talk with the doctors and talk with, you know, what if, what if that was there, but everyone kind of gets held up by all these silos, everyone's so siloed. And if we could just break those barriers down and support each other in the community, I think we would have such um, a better outcome for, for a lot of different things in our area in health and wellness in general. You feel like, since uh how old is green bay doulas now so green bay doulas will be we're eight and a half years old 
Okay. So over like the eight and a half years, do you feel like those silos are starting to just now starting to kind of come down a little bit more? I feel like collaborative? It ebbs, I feel like it ebbs and flows. I feel like sometimes sure. I feel like we're making really good progress. And then there might be a shift in the administration at a hospital or a shift in the midwifery services in our community of who's offering services and or a shift in a bunch of nurses retiring and new nurses coming in. It ebbs and flows. It, honestly, I feel like sometimes we make really great progress and then other times I feel like we went back um, a little bit. I feel like we keep moving forward, but we kind of two steps forward, one step back um, kind of a situation where we're never totally back at the starting point. But um yeah, it definitely has improved since I started as a doula um, 12 years ago. Um, but it, it could it could have gone faster and it could stay more like can I don't even know the word I'm looking for consistent instead of all the ebbs and flows. Do you feel like there's more doulas now, though, like becoming yeah. part of the doula community. I mean, I do because again, I didn't know what a doula was like two, three years ago, and now I'm singing your guys' praises. Like, I think everybody needs a doula. Everyone. I don't care how strong or mentally or physically or how much you know. Like, I think everybody could use one, and um, I know that it's probably one of the most selfless jobs you could possibly have. And how it, it takes a special person. You have to be adaptable and flexible, and like you said, be able to have those soft skills that these days not a lot of people have to be able to read the room or read the emotions and be able to diffuse situations. So I think it takes a special person. So I hope that we can continue to, you know, train more and more doulas to be part of the community and hopefully yeah. connect them to more and more parents because it's definitely needed. Well, and that's how I started. I was a solo doula and I had kind of hit my glass ceiling and then I found out, oh, I could make an agency. And there were so many people reaching out to me, wanting to get coffee with me. And I was like, but this is the same conversation I had with everyone. Like, what if we created like a community and then I created my own agency and then you all work for me and then you don't have to do the business side. We could all just be contractors. And, and it just kind of all happened out of necessity. But when I had my first 10 years ago, I was the only postpartum doula in the area. So who was going to help me. Uh, you know, I had a C-section on a Friday. I was home on Sunday and my husband was back at work Monday. So wow. we didn't have the leave, you know? So it was kind of like, oh no, what do we do? Um, and so now, yeah, I mean, we're running like multiple postpartum contracts right now. And I have doulas all over from the short lakeshore to the valley to Green Bay. Um, and we all have one thing in common is that, you know, we come from different walks of life, different religions, different ways of raising our kids. But at the end of the day, all of us are honed in on what is a doula and how do we support these families and, and bridge these gaps. And and we just keep working on it and it will always be uphill work. And that takes a special kind of personality to be OK with uphill work all the time. Um, but the wins are so good when they happen. <laughs> It's exciting. I hope things continue to, I know, like you said, it's always going to be an uphill battle, but you know, the more people that have like the stories that I have, like they're going to keep talking and keep telling their friends and family, like what an amazing experience they had so that more people are educated. That's what it comes down to, yeah. right? Is that education and communication. Piece well, and I and think the general wellness of it too, because um, I, when we had talked, I had graduated from the Packer protege program. And the goal was, is like, you know, if your employer gives you a discount for the YMCA, you're more likely to get a membership to the YMCA. So what would that look like if your employer invested in your well-being of parental care and said, Hey, we'll give you X amount of money towards a doula or childbirth classes or postpartum care and we want to make sure that you return to work properly and you know hey we'll make sure we consult with them on a pumping room or all these different things um or even on the other side of it you know if you're an employer and you have a employee that has a loss um how are you supporting them how are you making sure that they feel supported to come back to work um 
we can help with that. And so I think it goes beyond just the peop- the boots on the ground and the people and the clients that we work with. It's up to the employers really to start saying, okay, yes, you can use your HSA and flex for a doula, but also we're investing in you and we want you to come back to work because you're a member of our, our business. So here's what we're going to do for you. And people would be more inept to take it. It's just that because we don't make hospitals money, and we don't do anything medical, there's no billing code for us. Insurance doesn't acknowledge us. So employers don't think about it because it's not, but it is definitely something of a wellness benefit that could be offered for employers and no one's talking about it, um, but I am. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Is there a, I have one like, question um and i think i know the answer but when would when did most people start with the doula with their doula yeah everyone's different again type a's are gonna call us uh within that first trimester sometimes even before they even uh conceive we have some people that call us even before uh to say like well who would be a right fit for me and we talk through family practice ob's midwives certified nurse midwives uh, home birth midwives like all the options um so we have some people and then they call us back when they are expecting and off we go um a lot of people i would say uh want to get through that first trimester um, and then they call. Um, for us, uh, the more time we get to know you, the better. The better we can kind of plan our lives in a sense as well, because we're planning out nine months ahead of time, anytime we're doing this, right? Um, so I would say it's pretty common to be around like 18 to 20 weeks, but there's so much that we've missed almost. Like, did you go through round ligament pain by yourself? What about morning nausea? What about all the tests that they have to run? What about that first OB appointment? What about dating ultrasounds? What about, you know, so we didn't get to talk about any of that. And we just hope you figured it out, you know. Um, but then we have people who are 31 weeks calling. We have people who are 39 weeks calling because now they're looking at an induction and that wasn't their idea. And now they need the extra support. Um everyone's different in what it looks like. And I always wish I could give a much more concrete answer, but as you know, I am always vague. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think when, uh, so I found out whenever Erica told me that she was pregnant, she was like, Oh, I've already, <laughs> I got home. I was hunting. I was at deer camp and I got home from the Packer game that Thursday night. And she's like, starts telling me this story. And then she's like, so I'm, pregnant. <laughs> it's like, okay. She's like, but don't worry. I've already like reached out to, I believe it was you and uh, Sadie. <laughs> I think I was like, wait, she's like, I already established care with Emily. And I've talked with Sadie. I'm like, wait, I'm just finding out you've already been telling people. And she's like, Hey, I need my girls. <laughs> and I think I'm a planner. I need my village. <laughs> well, and I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. And that's kind of why I asked that question because I personally think people should have it. I mean, have you guys around from the jump? Like you establish that relationship. You have questions answered. There were so many times, like it's our first kid. We had no idea on so many different aspects or what to expect or what could happen. What one thing meant where it was like, should we worry about this? Like, no, you're like, it's good. Like it's normal. Keep me posted. We're going to stay in touch. Let me know if anything changes. This is like warning signs, red flags, or you guys just, Trevor just needs to chill type of thing. Like you understand you get to know people better. You get to know the family better. You get to know what they want. And I just think that's invaluable. And you found out that she was pregnant before I did. So there's that. (laughs) Do you know how common that is for me? I'm sure. (laughs) The amount of secrets that I hold for people is pretty awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And it's because you create the safe space. That's right. what it really is. I'm honored. I think it's awesome when people, I'm like, they're like, don't tell anyone. I'm like, I'm just add you to the pile of people that you're not <laughs> telling yet. Okay. Sounds good. Um, or, or if I know that's not, and they come to me, I'll say like, are we excited? What is our emotion right now? Because maybe that's not what they wanted. And and so I always check in, especially if it's somebody who I know and they're telling me they're pregnant. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, but wait, we weren't. Hmm. How are we feeling about this? And they're like, excited for now. Maybe not yet. I'm like, all right, when we celebrate, let me know when we're celebrating for now. I'll be like, okay, what do you need? And I'll just go straight into that business mode for them. And so they don't have that extra level of, okay, how is she going to feel when I tell her? Or, you know, if I tell my best friend, she's going to be like 
either yell at me or be really excited for me, but I don't need either of those emotions. And so, yeah, it's a, a pretty interesting world that I live in of, of this kind of news. Cause it's such a, you know, a, it's so life changing. It's so monumental. It's so ti- you know, priceless. And these are moments that, you know, just happen and it's, yeah, my job's pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, Emily, you are freaking awesome. And mm-hmm. I was just going to say the same thing. You enough. <laughs> I told Trevor, we're going to have another one just so you can be part of the process again. <laughs> you did say that. And I said, let me uh, recover from the first one. Let me let yeah. me talk with Emily one-on-one a few times and uh, <laughs> release some of the traumas. Yeah. I think your biggest lesson, Trevor, you learned is that uh, you fully know what Erica is capable of now. And, and we've had oh. in-depth conversations about that. Yes. Yes. I, yes. I'm terrified. Um, can never mess with it and can never complain <laughs> ever again. You, like I said, you I mean, can I knew she was a badass before, but like, I like I people have asked me like what I've thought. Like, do, oh, has your perspective changed of Erica? I'm like, I that's like doesn't even justify remotely what I feel at this point. Like, it's it's just incredible. It's a, an incredible thing that you guys do. I, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. I really don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it's crazy. We can bring life into this world. It's a miracle. It's pretty awesome. Thank cool. you for letting me be part of your journey. And I'm here. Anytime you need me, just let me know. Mm-hmm. And if Trevor gets a cold, he's calling me. Remember, <laughs> yeah. never going to complain yeah. to you That's ever again. Power. It's our secret, Emily. <laughs> he hasn't yet, though, for the record. He has not okay, texted me yet about it. Um, we'll just, I'm just that safe place. Just that safe yeah. place. You are. You are. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, awesome. thank you, guys. Well, thank you, guys. Emily, real quick, if people want to contact you, yeah, what's the best place? Uh, the website. Fill out a contact form. Easiest way to keep me organized. Uh, just fill out a contact form and... So you got to talk to me and I will, rest is history. I will get to you. Yep. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Awesome. Well, thank you both for taking time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> he says thanks too. There he is. Wide eyed. <laughs> All right, y'all. We will uh, talk with you next time. <laughs>